All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. I'm here with Len Penny from uh, what is it, Miss Miss Punny Penny? Miss Punny Penny, yeah. Yeah, and she is a speaker of the Scots language. Um, or I should say up, for, up front, you consider it Scots is considered to be a language, not a dialect. Is that definitely, correct? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um. You know, can you tell us a little bit about Scots to begin with, or um, this is something that many people haven't heard of, or they don't know what it is. So, just so a, a, lot of, a lot of people just assume that um, Scotland has two languages, uh, English and Gaelic, but there's actually a third language, which is Scots. So this is a language that people um, would have been speaking before um, they were colonized by the English. And for many, many years, um, Scots was repressed. It was discouraged. It was definitely, you were told very much not to use it, um, especially not in academic or professional spheres. Mm -hmm. So for, for many years, and it still continues today, Scotland um, has had a culture of having Scots as a language of the home. So you'll speak Scots at home and you'll speak English at work and at university. And, and definitely, um, there's a there's a phenomenon called the the Scots cringe, which is where um, people who hear Scots and are Scottish associate it with just a cringiness or like a, oh. a, you know, a they they really don't like it. They, so that's why um you okay. know most of most of any kind of backlash you get from speaking Scots will now be from Scottish people, which is interesting. Interesting, yeah. So then, do you consider yourself to be bilingual? Definitely. I mean, I. I I read a few studies on um, that have been written on this where um, you can actually see different parts of the brain being engaged with Scots and with English. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, modern Scots is very much a sort of hybrid of, of old Scots and English. So mm. um, it's it's more, a, more a, a case of sort of code switching than it is switching a language. Sure. So um, it's definitely, you know, it's it's seamless now for people who speak Scots. They're so used to having to be in professional circles and having to be in, in you know, mm. academic circles that now you don't even think about it. You're just like, OK, I'll just cut the Scots out. OK, I'll, I'll amp the Scots up. So, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, because I've watched a few of your videos on your YouTube channel uh, and some of them I can just understand just perfectly fine. Right. Like some of your videos are in, in English. Definitely. Yeah. Right. So and I, then I see the poetry I write, um, not all of it's in Scots, but all of it is Scottish. Right, right, right. So some of it I can just understand just fine as, you know, it just sounds like Scottish English, right? Like English right. With Scottish accent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, we all have accents. And um, and then other of your videos I listen to and I'm like, I can hear a few words here and there that I understand, but that's definitely not any English the way I recognize the English language. So it's really interesting. Um, yeah, and so that's why I just wanted to kind of do a video with you uh, for people who have never heard of this or maybe who, people who think Scots is just like a bad version of English. <laughs> um, so now since we've been talking about Scots for a little bit, would you mind giving us a uh, like a, a demonstration, an example of, of, of speaking Scots? So I wrote a poem um, called I'm No Having Children. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just get it up here. Sure. And um, so this is about basically just the Scots language and also the fact that because it's um, because it's used in the home, people learn it from their parents. They don't learn mm -hmm. it at school. So if, if the parents aren't teaching the kids, the kids won't learn it. And, you know, um, so the good thing about this poem, which I, I'll always refer to people who want to learn Scots, is that it's half written in English and half written in Scots. So the translation wow. is all there. So it, it shouldn't be too hard if anyone's if anyone's listening along. Gotcha, gotcha. Good. So this is I'm no having children. I'm no having children. I'm going to hear wains, and you can ask what I cry them. No, what are their names? And they'll be getting a piece. No, a wee pack lunch. They'll be haying a scran. No, having a munch. And they'll fanny a boot. They won't waste time, and when they write their wee poems, I'll make sure they rhyme. I'm no having children. I'm going to hear Wayne's who'll be gouping and bealing when they've got aches and pains, and instead of don't worry, I'll say dinna fash. Instead of stand your ground, dinna take any snash, and my Wayne's will be crabbit, no in a bad mood, and they'll greet, no cry, when their day is no good. I'm no having children. I'm going to hear Wayne's with a proud ancient language crammed in their wee brains, and whenever life tells them their English is bad, I'll tell them the hassles that their mammy had, and I'll say my ma's words to the day that I'm deed. You'll be all right, hen. You've a good Scots tongue in your head. 
Ah. So, okay, so I think I understood the gist of that. You, you take like a, a, Scots, a Scots word and an English word and you say like, we use this word, not... Yes, yes. So is Wayne's... Wayne's is children. Oh, yeah. So depending okay. on whereabouts in Scotland you go, there are two words for child. So it'll be Baron or Wayne. Um, ah. I think Wayne because I'm from sort of like the central belt, so... Okay, okay, cool. So um, are there a bunch of different dialects of Scots depending on all the different parts of the country that yeah, you go to? Definitely, definitely. One of, the, one of the big challenges with my Word of the Day videos is uh, um, people will say, oh, I don't know how to this word. And then you'll say, oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Aberdeen. Oh, you'll speak the Doric ah. then. Doric is a, a huge a huge part, a huge uh, dialect in Scots, and it is, it's gorgeous to listen to, but I've, I sometimes mm -hmm. I'm having to talk to my friends and I'm like, ah. I've got no idea what you're saying. So that's when people say that Scots isn't a language. I'll just point them to the fact that good luck finding a dialect with so many dialects within it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I one of my one of the most popular videos on my channel was um, about my accent, and I'm from Wisconsin, you know, in the northern US. Uh, and you know that that video has probably uh, generated more more views than any of my other ones, and I have people coming on all the time telling you, saying like, "I'm from Wisconsin, and that's not how we speak," or like they're accusing me of like not actually being from Wisconsin or something. Like I was just making up my accents to like make fun of Wisconsin people. They'll say that's a Minnesota accent or that's a Canadian accent. Well, I don't know. Just we all speak differently, right? Like just because yeah, we're all from yeah. one spot doesn't mean we all speak exactly the same. I had people coming on my videos saying, um, oh, I, I can't I can't stand people putting on a Scottish accent. You're not even Scottish. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was Scottish when I woke up this morning. Right. <laughs> How are you gonna tell me where I'm from? Everyone's got a problem with everyone, so yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Um, cool, yeah. So uh Len also prepared a a few words, right? In Scots um just to I spark a little bit of conversation about the scots language um so yeah you want to go through a few of those so the first word i've got for you is thrapple Thrappledouser. Hi. <laughs> okay i've got no idea what that could be i hear the word apple in it <laughs> but uh, well <laughs> actually you know what you're in a roundabout way you've actually come round to sort of the truth oh I, okay. do you want me to just tell you uh, yeah yeah, what is that? Okay, so the thrapple is the throat. So Adam's apple, you'd have been close. Ah, uh, okay, I gotcha. The thrapple is the throat, and dowser means, you know, to get doused. So a thrapple dowser is a drink which soothes a dry throat. Ah. Uh, which I, I think is just, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. Uh -huh. Sure, yeah, that's a great, it reminds me a lot of, um, I speak this other language called Esperanto. You probably, oh, I've heard, yeah. you've heard of it. It's, it's really fun to speak that language because there's so many prefixes and suffixes that you can put together to make new words and you yeah. can get really creative with it. Um, and it's just a lot, it's a lot of fun to play around with the meaning of words, but I like that. Thrapple dowser. <laughs> what was it? Thrapple dowser. Thrapple dowser. I, it's, it's used a lot in sort of in bars and pubs, you know, you'll, you'll say, oh, I'm only here for a wee thrapple dowser. I'm only here to mm -hmm. just, you know, wet, wet my whistle, I think would be the yeah. English equivalent. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. so, it's funny. You also use the word "we" a lot in a way that we never would. Do you, is that like a part of the Scots language, or do you just speak that when you're speaking English too? Um, I would. I will always use "we." I would. I'd never really use "little" or "small." I just mm -hmm. it feels it feels weird to me. But um, yeah. definitely, definitely when I'm speaking English as well. When, the thing is, when you speak English, sometimes some Scots words come in, and you're just you know you have to just. Mm -hmm explain it to people but it's not it's not an issue so sure sure yeah um and the, the, i guess one of the other things that i've seen uh just from looking through your tweets is you use the word lads a lot yes is, is that a gender neutral term in scotland for, for for the younger generation definitely like when i'm when i'm at work and you know there'll just be girls on and i'll be like all right lads how's it going um but a lot of people have taken issue with it and it's a point I completely I completely respect. Um, mm -hmm. I understand that it carries different connotations in America and across, even in England and stuff. So um, yeah. I would always say that it, from from me coming, you know, from, from what I'm putting out, it's gender neutral. If anyone takes offense at that, then I'm happy to clarify. Um, but as far as sure. I'm concerned, I would say lads, Doug Ripper girls. Um, and also my videos have to be under 20 seconds because the way they're filmed. So I don't really have time to be like, all right, lads and lasses. So it's- Yeah, it's okay. okay. 
That's funny. Um, it, so it's probably similar to them the way that we would use the word guys. Yeah, 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 definitely. Mm. Someone someone compared it to, to y'all as well. Mm, yeah, right. So yeah, like well, gender and, neutral generalization sort of. Right. The part of America that I'm from, we would never, m most people don't say y'all, We but we would say you guys. Uh, and it's, it's funny because this word guys has just come to mean, like if I say you guys, it means y'all. It's like the second yeah, person. Yeah, it's, like, it's like people. It's, it's just, it's a, and you know, again, I can see why people might think, okay, this is, this is just directed at men, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, I think I think we're past that at this point. We're yeah. you know, we've taken words from the original connotations and changed them into modern connotations. Sure, I mean language is always changing. Definitely, yeah. and I think that's like that's one of the exciting things about it is that you can you can have a word that used to mean something and take it completely different way. Take it, you know, sure. change the meaning, reclaim a meaning, even you know, yeah. there's words there's yeah. words which have originally had offensive connotations and people have taken them and, and reclaimed them, which I think is great. Right. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, and, and, and it changes pretty quickly too. Like I use certain words very differently than my grandparents do. Definitely. Yeah. And that, that's why, it, you know, it's, 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 you have to always make sure that you're on the same page as someone. You can't just go like, oh, this one, this means this to me. And then people are like, oh, well, this doesn't mean the same thing to me. And it's like, you know, you've got to make sure that you're being clear with people and being sure. as open and honest as you can be. Sure. <laughs> All right. So we've got Thrappeldauser as one of our, as the first word, uh, what else? You've got clam jamfrey. Clam jamfrey. <laughs> I, okay, I, no I haven't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I, I hear three English words in there, but I have, I have a hunch that it has nothing to do with clams, <laughs> jams, and free. Clam jamfrey. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, to me, it sounds like kind of like a, uh, clam jamfrey, like a, like a big mess or like a, I don't know, like I'm thinking of a jam, like a traffic jam where everything's all. You are, together. So, you are, you are absolutely so, you're so close. So it can be used as with many Scots words, which I absolutely love about the language. It can be used as a noun or a verb. So mm -hmm. a clam jam free as a noun is a sort of a, a, a rabble or a mob of people. Ah, um, okay. Whereas as a verb, it means to clutter something up or make it into sort of a mess. Ah. Okay. I, I think the, the fact that you got um you got sort of a jam from that I think is just yeah. a coincidence, but at the same time it's just it was amazing there that you got it. <laughs> yeah, I I mean yeah I think that was just luck, but yeah that was pretty close. Have you, uh, are you familiar with the term cattywampus? It sounds like a Lewis Carroll thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, this was the first time I learned. Uh, this was a word I heard for the first time just a few years ago. Um, but it's some it sounds. The meaning of cattywampus is very sim similar to what clam jamfrey sounds like to me. But it's just like, um, I don't know, like all messed up. Like, uh, you know, if you were to open an electronics device and the wires are all like yeah. going, like mixing up and stuff, you'd say, oh, that's all cattywampus. Or, you know, if, you, if you, you're trying to untie a rope, but it's just all twisted around itself, it's cattywampus. I had, a, I had a word like that the other day. It was mixy maxi, um, mm. which is like higgledy piggledy, and everything was all muddled and mixed up. Yeah. Um, okay. That's funny. Um, all right. So, do you have how many other, I don't know, do you have a list of words that you're going off of or just I, I'm, I'm just going off my favorite ones. So, okay, okay. <laughs> right. the, the next one, I don't know if you've seen, Satutari. Can you say that again? Satutari. Satutari. I don't know. I hear the word tutor in there. <laughs> and okay, I hear uri at the end, which makes me think it's like a noun. Um, like maybe a noun, like based off of a verb or something. This one I would say is the easiest to get if you just say it slowly. Situtery. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that the way you said it. Situtery. Situtery. Yeah. So set. Situtery. If you take it like that, oh, like... okay, okay. Um, so is it like sitting outside? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. It's an outside eating area or a conservatory. Ah, gotcha. That makes sense. Situtri. I love it. Oh, that's one of my favorite words, just because yeah. it's so self-explanatory. It's a situtri. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. we put we put a glottal stop sometimes in words. Um. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if you're 
familiar with like mm -hmm. the, obviously i mean you, you do like the sort of linguistic stuff but um so satutary would be how i would say it if i were being you know trying to communicate to other people but if i was just saying it myself i'd just say satutary um, ah okay yeah. yeah i got that um i think the the vowel the ooh is what got me yeah because i think maybe it's pronounced different in, in scotland rather than ow yeah like we would yeah. say out, outside I outside is what we would say. Like, out and about, uh, I think that so I had some Canadians the other day saying that they, they sort of say it the same way. Yeah. Um there is there's a phenomenon called Canadian raising that I actually did a video all about this. It's really interesting. Where we would say outside, they would say outside, outside. Actually, it's more common to say like outside. Ah, see. Mm -hmm. uh, it also depends uh, certain parts of the country that you're from. I, I follow a YouTuber. I um, can't remember his name now, but he's from Vancouver. And man, every time he says the word aboot, it just like sticks out to me. Like, uh, and I'm, to me, I'm like, is he saying that on purpose? But I've heard him say aboot so many times that that's just how he speaks. <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day that was like, do, do, do Scottish people speak that way when no one's listening? Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, when when you're from a when you have an accent that is, I mean, any accent really. I mean, when you're hearing someone who speaks an accent different from you, it sounds so foreign. But that's really just how people speak, right? Like we grow up speaking that way, and oh, I'm sure my, I'm sure my accent sounds really bizarre to a lot of your, you know, pe your followers. I think because we we definitely grow up with American TV, American ah. you know, songs, American stuff like that. It's it's it doesn't sound surreal at all. It doesn't sound weird. But I feel like okay. because the, maybe the American interpretation of a Scottish accent is what you guys see on TV. And yeah. definitely, I mean, I did I did a couple of tweets on this because I was watching Criminal Minds and I got absolutely mm. raging. Um, <laughs> It's. <laughs> I just feel like could we not? Can we not just start? If you're wanting to put a Scottish character in your Scott yeah. in your TV series, just hire a Scott. Don't don't. Right. don't we chat. Don't hire uh, Mel Gibson. Like Twenty minutes of dialect coaching and then send him on the screen because he's not right. real. <laughs> right, that's funny. Um, yeah. Do you watch? Have you seen Braveheart? I have. I have seen some of it. Yeah. I. I could. I don't think I could sit through the whole thing. It's just, it's Does Mel Gibson do a good Scottish accent? No, no, it's terrible. That's I mean, funny. he tried. He tried his best. Mm -hmm. he tried his best. Yeah. And there have been worse ones. Definitely, there have been worse ones. Yeah, it's funny. There are some uh, like British actors who have done who have done American roles, like um, Hugh, Hugh Laurie in House always gets me. Who's oh House? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He's British. Also, I think is Andrew Garfield. Yes, Andrew Garfield is British. Uh, yeah, he is. He is. And then um, apparently the guy from The Walking Dead. My Andrew wife Lincoln. Just watching The Walking Dead Andrew recently. Lincoln, and yeah, was like, you know, Rick is actually British. And I was like, he, he does a really good Georgia accent to me. That's amazing. I mean, I'm not from Georgia, but he sounds he sounds straight up American. Yeah. Um. It, but what's really interesting, the, the thing that really got me interested in the Scots language is um, I had been learning Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then as I was learning Spanish, I realized how close it is to Portuguese. I mean, Spanish and Portuguese are very similar okay. to the point where I've never studied Portuguese really. And I can go on the Portuguese Wikipedia and read the whole article and understand like 90% of them. And I was like, this is really bizarre to like be able to understand the language that I don't speak. And I never thought that there was an equivalent in to English. Um, but I think Scots is so similar that it's like, yeah, I don't catch every word. And there's definitely, you know, uh, situtery and things <laughs> like that that I wouldn't understand. But, you know, uh, you know, the syntax and, and a lot of the, the smaller words, I think, are, are close enough to each other that I was I'm able to grasp a lot of what's what's happening. Definitely. And that's that's the example I always give is Spanish and Portuguese, because it's like you would never say to someone. Oh, Portuguese isn't a language. Portuguese is just Spanish in a Portuguese accent. No, and, right. and English and Scots are, are the same. They're sister languages. They're, mm -hmm. you know, they share linguistic similarities. But at the same time, 
to to erase a, a whole language and it's so deeply tied to the culture that if you start if you start coming away with all that stuff it's 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 not happening like um there's a, been such a resurgence in the last couple of years for Scots speakers to feel comfortable and to be mm-hmm. open especially on social media that's been amazing for like um come just speaking the way that you speak and and not really caring mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you know at the end of the day the only person who is holding us back now is ourselves so if we sort yeah. of you know if, if we if we make it make it known that we're not we're not ashamed then more people will see that and more people will want to speak sure. and if you think about it it really doesn't make sense to have the idea that one variety of the language is correct and all of the other ones are wrong mm-hmm. you know um anyone who's ever studied linguistics that's the first thing they teach you in linguistics class is that there's no such thing as right and wrong in language we all just speak differently and you know you can't choose one person and say this guy this guy speaks correctly and everyone else is just speaking a bad version of his language exactly you know um that doesn't even make sense because like who gets to decide which one is correct I know it's it's we we live in such an anglocentric society um, mm. and a lot of people have said to me like oh wait, why what's the point in teaching this like it's not you're never going to be able to use it professionally you're never going to be able to make money off this and I'm like <sighs> I don't, I, I, what 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 joy we can find in language out with the um the academic spheres and the and the professional spheres I mean we can speak Scots in those in those like you know language based societies like mm. academia and professional spheres and stuff but at the same time i'm wary of the fact i just said out with and <laughs> that's a scots word as well <laughs> what was it you out, with. out with out with yeah out with the preposition that only happens in the scots language is that like without it's it's the opposite of within yeah so so we have ah. out with and within gotcha um, just as I was speaking there, that just slipped out. And then I was like, oh, hang on. <laughs> I better yeah, go back in there. Yeah. Correct. yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it doesn't make sense. Um, well, I speak Esperanto. So for someone to tell me what's the point, and, you know, people say that all the time, actually. Yeah. Why would you learn that language? You're never going to be able to use it at work. It's like, is that the only reason there is for learning a language? <laughs> Like, what a dull life you must live if the only reason to learn a language is just its pragmatic usage. It's the thing about um, Scots is a minority language, and it's um, it's protected, I think, by UNESCO. So mm. um, the 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 fact that it needs preserved and it needs brought back, it's it's there's not there's never been a, a doubt in my mind that Scots needs to be preserved. It's not a, it's 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 hard work preserving a language. You know, mm-hmm. you have to keep it in circulation. You have to teach it. You have to make sure right. it's preserved especially nowadays digitally that's why i've been mm-hmm. trying to do that with my video series just so it's accessible sure. and easy mm-hmm. to digest but at the same time if that dies out like the consequences are, are so severe you lose part of your culture you lose your history your heritage you lose you know words that have no linguistic equivalent in english mm-hmm. you know it's, mm-hmm. it's just it's scots is such a rich and diverse language that i feel like it, you should want to speak it. It shouldn't just mm-hmm. be like, oh, you have to preserve this language. It's like, look how exciting it is that we can preserve this language. Yeah, yeah. Well, and especially for people like you on your channel, you know, you do a lot of poetry, right? Oh, definitely. So yeah. it's not it's not just about, you know, what's the use of this? You know, it's, well, what is the use of poetry? <laughs> like Exactly. You know? I mean, if, if in my poems, I definitely, I try, I, I do some poems in English and I do some poems mm-hmm. in Scots and, the ones in Scots I always feel are more personal to me because mm. even when I speak English, you know, I'll put in words like te instead of to and mm. ma instead of my. And, you know, even my tweets, like I write all my tweets with these little additions and it might seem small. It might seem like, oh, this is just an annoying thing. But that's mm. how I speak. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's. It's it's important for me to reclaim that because at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, I I got I've got bullied throughout my life for different ways that I've spoke I've I have spoke I have sp- mm-hmm. I have spoken. I'm yeah, trying. That's what I would say. I, 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 I I'm not telling you what to say, but I would say I have spoken. <laughs> um, I I but yeah, the, the way that I've I've spoke throughout my whole life, I've been told it's wrong, it's bad English. I'm saying things wrong. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just putting mm-hmm. it on, and you know, it, at the end of the day. It, it does take a toll on you like I definitely do have a home accent and a university accent you know and it's it's 
it it makes you feel like you're having to hide a part of yourself when you're mm -hmm. in polite company. That's why in some of my videos, when there's a big word, I'll be like, oh, for in polite company, we would say this. Whereas I want to reach a point where we can feel really, com com you know, we could feel really confident and comfortable saying Scots words. Like that clam jam free that I told you earlier on, that was used in Parliament by a Scottish politician. Mm. And I was just mm. sitting there watching a video compilation of all these Scots words when using Parliament. And I was like, yeah. oh, it made me quite emotional because I'm like, mm -hmm. here's the upper echelons of political atmosphere and they're saying Scots words and yeah. people are respecting them. And I'm like, oh, what a, what a world we could have. That's great. Yeah. So um, so you speak, you people in Scotland speak Scots at home. Then, or I mean, I get, I can't. You think you can't speak for all Scot Scottish people? No, obviously not. Um, but um, is it generally spoken in Scots when you're at home? For me, it is. I mean, we we very much like we. There's there's loads of of sayings and phrases and stuff that we say at home that um like red up or red out. I think there's an American equivalent. A lot of people from, I think it was Pennsylvania, they said they used that word, they, that phrase, red up. Have you ever heard that red, one? Red up. Is it like, how do you spell that? R-E-D-D-U-P. Red. red up. No, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so red up is to tidy something or to clear something or to, you know. So <laughs> if my if my mum, if a room's dirty and messy, my mum's not going to go, oh, could you tidy that room for us? She'll be yeah. saying, oh, could you give that a red up? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it would not surprise me at all if there are portions of the United States where that is common because, you know, a lot of Scottish people have come here over the years and then certain pockets of the United States will also have uh, heavy influence from, you know, from Scottish immigrants and Irish immigrants, Italian immigrants, whatever. I um, love that about America, though. You just have so much. You, you've got so many people who've immigrated into your country that not only has the culture adopted loads of other different cultures, but the language has ad adopted so many other languages. And it's mm. like that, that should be something to celebrate, I think, because mm -hmm. it's, it's not a homogenization. It's a, it's a, an expansion and an adaptation of language, which is just, sure. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so if you speak, if you grow up speaking Scots, when do, when would you say you learned English? Oh, that's interesting. Um, see that there's like there's philosophical, there's political ways of going about this question because I mean you could you could argue that I learned English first. You could argue mm -hmm. that in the house we spoke English with Scots mm -hmm. words, but I don't see it like that. I see that I grew up speaking Scots and English just happened, you know, by osmosis at school mm -hmm. and that because you know you you learn things like oh you know a Hawaiian bell your head. There's no there's no English equivalent to that. Mm. If if somebody says to you, oh, away and boil your head, you know, that's that's them saying, go away and boil your head. <laughs> Which I, I, I don't think there's no... You know what I mean? Yeah, I could come up with some something similar. I mean, I, I understand what you would be saying with that, but um, no, we <laughs> I wouldn't. But, like, it's things like that, and it's it's, it's like... when I would say that I learned English at school and and that was when like you, you'd learn the proper way of speaking you know it wouldn't be a piece it would be a sandwich so at home my mum would say oh I'll make you your pieces for the day mm -hmm. so you know or, or even like you know so she'd make me a piece which is a sandwich and then mm -hmm. I'd go to school and it'd be like okay it's lunchtime get your get your you know get your lunch boxes out you know and sure. I'm like well, okay this is my piece then sure mm -hmm. and, and then if it's a playtime you've got a play piece you know so it's it's it's, ah. it's it's way it occupies two different spaces in my mind and just as because i studied spanish at, at university um, and yeah. just as, okay this is a manzana but it's also an apple i'll look at a sandwich and go it's a sandwich but it's also a piece ah uh, okay yeah. okay and so i'm sure because just because of the similarity of of english and scots that's you know you know, and even in this video, you've used a few words that I didn't recognize. Um, so how how much does the code switching uh, affect? I mean, do you ever feel like you're speaking both Scots and English at the same time? So I had to give a presentation the other day for university mm -hmm. and 
it was the first time in a long time because I, you know, I, I work, I work in a kitchen, so we speak Scots in there. It's just like it's just you know we just speak normally to each other. And mm. then when I was doing university, a lot of the students are not Scottish, so I was I was very conscious of the way that I was speaking. So it wasn't just the words; it was how I was saying it. So I would put on a very um very clear very enunciated accent and I would make sure that things I was saying would be mm. understood by all so and then I finished it watched it back and thought that's no me you know what I mean like it's it's no the way that I want to be speaking it's not the way that I should be speaking but it's the way that I feel that I should be speaking because other people are having an impact on how I'm saying things I feel mm. like a lot of people feel that way um there's a obviously there's different cultural implications of this but I don't know if you've heard of AAVE Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I've been thinking about that a lot since this conversation started because there's a lot of similarities. So for me, I mean, and I, and I know a lot of people, they would see that as very distinctly its own language, mm -hmm. like very, yeah. very distinct because, it, you know, and, and to, to impose the same things that are imposed upon Scots, which is this is unprofessional. This is not the way you should be speaking. There's an assumption that English is the 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 pinnacle of linguistic, you know, it's it's not it genuinely mm. isn't it's it's we live in as i said before quite an anglo-centric society where we see english as being professional it's the mm -hmm. language of, of business deals it's the language of you know law you know tribunals it's the it's right. the you know it's how teachers want to speak it's how university things are taught and it's like if we could just step outside that if we could look out with the you know the things that we've been preconditioned to think we could we could have such a diverse and, and interesting discussion about language and see language differently yeah yeah for sure that makes sense um i, I uh yeah for those who don't know um aave stands for african-american vernacular english and um i probably should have said this up front but yeah we had to learn about that a lot in my sociolinguistics class because um you, there is just uh, a, you know a, a mindset. There is a, a stigma against African American vernacular English that um, that it's just a like a bad version of English. Like people who speak speak. <laughs> I just said speak. I don't know. Is that a Gaelic or a Scots word? Um, there's no. There's people. <laughs> I was just kidding about that. There's mindset that people who speak AAVE just don't know how to speak English correctly. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they don't know how to speak English, not trying to speak English. You know, they might, they might think they're speaking English or, you know, um, people might tell them that they're speaking English poorly. But if you look at it as just a linguistic system, that's just what it is. It's its own entity. It's not, it's similar to English, you know, it has a lot of the same words and stuff like that. But it's like I always say to people, I'm not failing to speak English. I'm succeeding in speaking Scots. Yeah. I, I never sit out and think, oh, I'm I'm speaking English right. No, I, I speak Scots and, and a lot of it lines up with English. But that's because, you know, if you look at <laughs> we were colonized by the English, so you know, things <laughs> it's not really a choice as to whether they're mm. similar or not. We're we're mm. neighbors geographically and linguistically. So sure. there are similarities, but at the same time, when I speak, it's not bad English. It's good mm -hmm. Scots. Yeah, exactly. There's um there's this really interesting phenomenon called dialect continua, um, where, for example, Dutch and German, they're mm -hmm. separate languages. Okay, and they're similar, like as far as languages go. I don't speak either of them, but my understanding is that Dutch and German are fairly similar because they they split off recently. Mm -hmm. But in, you know, people who live in, I don't know, let's say Northern Belgium and they speak Dutch or, uh, you know, they live in, let's say, Western Netherlands, um, they, they speak a, a certain variety of Dutch. But people who live closer to Germany will speak Dutch that's a little bit closer to German. And then there's there's um, sort of a, a continuum, a gradient in between, you know, let's say in between Amsterdam and Berlin where... Mm -hmm there's you know every village can understand the people uh in the village next to them and and uh even when you get to the border of germany and the netherlands um 
and I'm this is all I've read all of this. I don't have any firsthand experience with this. And but so there's there's never a break where the people can't understand each other. Yeah. But the people who speak German, standard German, can't understand the people who speak, speak Dutch. standard Dutch. Um, so it's like, at what point do you call it a, a new language? Well, it's it's really hard to define that stuff. It gets it's really yeah. muddy in there. Definitely, I think people get sort of bogged down in the in the labels and the you know mm -hmm. what's the dialect, what's the language. Like at the end of the day, if calling it a language and defining it as a language means that we get recognition and we're able to preserve it better, then absolutely, I'm going to call mm -hmm. it a language. Yeah. I feel like it's a language, and if if other people don't feel like it's a language, if other Scottish people don't feel like it's it's something that's distinct enough to be classified as a language, that's valid. I'm not going to sit and argue about it. But personally, for me. I'd say it's a language. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's saying that having studied a foreign language, having studied two, yeah. and then coming back and looking at Scots in a different light. Because there are there are different syntax things, there's different pronunciation things, there's different verbs and nouns and adjectives and prepositions that are not the same. So for me, as sure. far as I'm concerned, that defines a language. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you say anything about like the linguist? I, I don't know anything about this, so I'm just curious. Is there like a big, is there like a, a, a thin line in the border between like Northern England and, and Scotland where the language changes? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, do they speak English differently in Northern Northern England as they do in S Southern Scotland? I, I am not, I'm not entirely sure, but I would say that um, definitely, there, there are there are words that have traveled down like uh, when I did my out with video um which a lot of people in England were like what this is a Scots word I use this word and I was I was so encouraged because it, yeah. it just shows that sort of prolifer proliferation of the Scots language but um definitely a lot of people who lived on the border and below were like oh I use out with I've used out with all my life mm -hmm. and I'm like so at what point does it stop being because then people were saying okay it's not a Scots word it's because we use it and then I was like, well, I take I take issue with that because of the fact that it's originated in Scotland. It is a Scots word. Just because it has managed to trickle its way down into England yeah. does not make any less Scots in origin or use. Right. If you're saying the word out with, I mean, you, you don't have it in America, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. No. I would say that that's, that's a good example of a word which has, and possibly because it is such a good word, it's such a useful word. I feel like because English doesn't have a really good equivalent for out with um, and I make sure and put it in every single academic essay that I will ever write just as a little you know mm -hmm. <laughs> a little rebellion there you go yeah that's funny um, alright well we're going to be coming up on the end of this live stream soon but I just want to give anyone uh, who happens to be watching this opportunity to ask any questions for Len whether that's about the Scots language or about you know uh, English in Scotland or or anything that has to do with that. So if anyone is uh, watching this and you have uh, uh, some questions, I'm, I know I see I'm missing a lot of comments here, so I apologize if someone has already. Uh, oh, here Silver Walks says, "What's your favorite saying or word in Scottish?" Oh, I love "lang me a lumrik." Lang me a how did you say that? <laughs> Lang me your lumrik. Lang me your lumrik. <laughs> is that, that's something that we say on Hogmanay and New Year's Eve or on yeah. birthdays or things, just to let people know that we love them. It means long may your chimney smoke or may you always have fuel for your fire. Oh, I get it. That's that's really interesting. It, okay, so I, I heard the word long in there. You said lang? Lang, so lang is long. long. May is the same. Year, your uh -huh. lum, L-U-M, lum means chimney. Okay, okay. And reek means to smell or to smoke, depending on the connotation, like the, the language the context. Right, okay, interesting. Uh, here someone just says, does Lynn speak Scottish Gaelic too? I believe you answered that already, right? I don't I don't speak Gaelic, but I would absolutely love to learn and I will be doing it next year. That's my uh, that's my goal. That's my New Year's resolution is to learn Gaelic. Hmm. All right, um, what about the orthography of Scots on social media? Like spelling and... Um, so there's a huge, a huge debate about Scots whether we should standardise spelling. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't personally think we should because, as I say, there's so many dialects, there's so mm. many different ways of speaking it, there's so many different accents and influences. And the, because Scots is so phonetic in the way that it's transcribed, it's predominantly an oral language. So when you transcribe it, you're transcribing it the way you say it. So mm -hmm. the way I say it, it's not the same as the way somebody in Aberdeen says it and the way somebody in the Highlands says it or the way somebody in the Central mm -hmm. Belt or Fife. So for me, transcribing Scots should always be about the person transcribing it. Mm -hmm. it's up to the reader to interpret that the way that they want. Yeah. I was telling her earlier, um, this, this I have this book called, I don't know how you would say that, Button Benagogo, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's a novel written in Scots in... Yeah, I uh, this was part of my like basically my first ever uh, tongue tech it. I don't know, that's just a funny word. Um, this was my first ever uh, uh, exposure to the Scots language, and it's really funny because um, I see a lot of words in here that I just straight up recognize, mm -hmm. and then a whole lot of words that mean nothing to me but they look like they could sort of be a scottish word <laughs> um but yeah i remember reading about this and i'm saying that there's no like the, you know the guy who wrote this novel just kind of came up with his way of of, of writing scots and it's weird because we sort of have this idea that all that, that language is written or that writing is an important part of language but yeah. You know, writing has only been around for like two thousand years. Exactly, or something like that. Two, three thousand years, maybe tops three. Um, and most languages, there's like six thousand languages in the world, and only about two hundred of them have an alphabet or a writing system. Um, so that's really like irrelevance to to the usage of a language. Like the vast majority of human beings throughout history have used language without any sort of way of writing or reading. I, I really, I really struggle with spelling and with reading sometimes in English, mm -hmm. um, just because English is mental. <laughs> <laughs> spelling yeah, it doesn't make any for me, I, 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 I'm very much a phonetic speller. So mm -hmm. for, for me, Scots is such an absolute godsend because I can look at a word and know exactly how it's said, and I can think a word and know exactly how it's spelled. So mm. I feel like, and a lot of a lot of teachers have said that when they've started speaking Scots in schools and teaching it to to Wayne's in in the class, the um, the kids are are picking it up, and especially dyslexic children, mm. because there there's there's no pressure. If you want to spell it a certain way, you spell it a certain way. And I feel like we need to take certain aspects of language back to the basic goal of language, which is communication. Yeah. If I can say something and you understand me, we're communicating, we're speaking. Right. If I right. can write something and you can read it, we're, we're communicating. And I think that goes much more closely to uh, how how language has been used throughout all of human history, right? As opposed to, I can't, I just can't imagine like a, you know, uh, a tribal person in the jungle uh, of Africa well before the first papyrus had ever been invented to sell, tell them their three-year-old you know no you're not supposed to say it this way it has to be this way right like they don't go to school they just they grow up and they hunt and gather right and there's no political structure or anything but um i language think the concept what was that language is a tool yeah exactly you use it to to connect with people all right um let's see i'm missing a few uh, uh i know i'm missing a lot of comments here um Punk, Punky Kenicky says, folk understand me better in the north of England than in the south. The border has moved a lot over the centuries. Yeah, so I'm, that, I think that's probably has a lot to do with the dialect continuum I, I've, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was talking about earlier, right? Like the people in every village will understand the people on either side of them. Absolutely. Um, let's see. I think some of these comments are in Scots, so I can't no, read them. No. Oh, that's so good. I'm so glad that it's Scots you are here. Yeah, here, I'm gonna send I'm, I'm gonna send this to you. I don't know, if, see if you understand this or not. Copy and paste it. Oops. YouTube doesn't support comments on private videos. Oh, all right, I guess I can't send it to you. Were you, were you Faye Len? I don't know. Oh, I'm Faye, I'm Faye. 
I'm all over the place actually. I was born in Airdrie, um, and then I moved to Dunblane, and I'm currently in Fife, so that's where I'm from. Okay, I, 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 in Scotland, where do you, where do you stay and where do you stay? Because where where we stay, like someone says, where do you stay? That means where do you live, yeah. and where do you stay means where are you from? Like where do you from? Where do okay. you? Live? As soon as you started to answer that question, I understood, but I was looking at it and I was like. I don't know what that means. Uh, you, you'll right. be reading it with the context of your accent. So if you, if you, if you, right. if you were think, just thinking of Scott's accent, and you'll, yeah. you'll, you'll understand. You yeah, I, I, right. If I were to read that and then think, all right, what am I saying with a Scottish accent? Then I feel like I probably would have got that. All right, here's another one. What terms? Uh, what are terms you use for dating? For example, if you are dating someone, uh, then do you say we are going out or we are talking, etc. Um, I know a lot of people use were winching. That's a, that's a difference that I am um, that I I know is because for me a winch is a passionate kiss, like a French kiss is ah, a winch. So you get okay. caught winching at the back of a bus. But for a lot of people, winching is courting. Um, ah, so that, okay. I think that's evolved um, because nowadays we would if I were, if I were going out with someone, I'd say going out. Um, uh -huh. I wouldn't say we're dating. I'd say we're going out. Going um, out. Yeah, is someone underneath? Just said, uh, gone out with, gone out, Aye, going out with someone, going out, yeah. we're going out. Yeah, okay. It's casual, um, we're going out. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, is Ween's West Coast like the messages? Oh, okay, so messages is the shopping. So when you're going shopping and you're buying food, groceries, that sort of thing, you're buying your messages. Uh huh. So it's an errand, um, basically, like you go for the messages. Right. Is that connected to the English word message? Somehow? I believe it used to be, they used to have wee boys on bikes delivering like messages and then they'd also bring food and stuff to people. Ah, so okay. there might be a similarity, but we would always just say the messages. So that's more, I'd say, a modern Scots word than it is like an ancient Scots word. Right. Um, let's see. And then I have, no, nah, you're, you're a tool, you numpty. <laughs> you're a tool, you numpty. A numpty is like uh, it's an insult. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. How to, I don't know how to pronounce this stuff. Okay. Um, uh, Nigel Callahan says, "Is messages also used in Wales? Do you happen to know that?" I am unfortunately not an expert in in Wales, but okay. I, I, I hope so because I think it's just a great word. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, all right. Well, I think. That's where I'm going to cut off this live stream today. So thanks so much for coming on and talking to me about thanks Scott. Thanks for having me. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Scott, follow him on YouTube and uh, Twitter. Do you have anything else that you're on? Uh, I, nope, just Twitter and YouTube. I am at Lenny Soros on Twitter. I am Miss Punny Penny on YouTube. And yeah, that's me. Okay. And I also included links to those below the description of this video. So thanks so much. And uh, I'll be in contact probably over Twitter. Perfect. Thanks All for right. having me. Yep. See ya. Bye.